Hey everybody, it's Miss Lee. I am here to share with you the elements of a folk tale. Folk tales are some of my favorite short stories to teach in class because they are simple and they are fun and they are really creative. So the first element of a folk tale I want to share with you is the cultural elements. When we're talking about the cultural elements of a folk tale, you have a unique setting and unique characters that fit into a certain culture. When we're talking about culture, we're talking about a certain way that a certain group lives in a certain location. Okay, you guys probably relate mostly to the Cajun culture because we're in Louisiana and you hear about it a lot or you might fit into that culture. Okay, so if you have a Cajun folktale, you're not going to have a character like a polar bear that would not fit in at all. Okay, so unique setting and unique characters. If we're talking about Cajun setting, chances are it's going to be down in a bayou and you're going to have characters that are usually found in a bayou like uh, crawfish and alligators or crocodiles, whichever one is usually there. <laughs> all right. Um, going along with that trend, you've also got dialect. Okay, with dialect, we're talking about the way a certain character might speak because of where they are from, because of their culture. So, if you still have that Cajun aspect of a folktale, then you're going to have a character that sounds Cajun. Okay, he might sound like, Et tu fait, y'all from Shreveport? You know, talking about Ray from Princess and the Frog, he uses a dialect and is usually the kind we relate to here in Louisiana. And the next cultural element is the oral tradition. Many folk tales have been passed on simply by being told over and over and over again to different people. All right, so before they were written down, they were passed on orally. They were simply told and retold. Okay, and that is part of the culture aspect of folk tales. The next element I want to talk about is hyperbole. Thank heavens we're not in math class because we're not talking about a certain graph. All right, we're talking about the literary term hyperbole. Uh, for example, you have this girl here, hyperbole girl, and it says that she's faster than a speeding bullet but she's really huffing and puffing like it's difficult for her. So it's exaggeration. Saying that she is faster than a speeding bullet, uh, no, that's not how it actually works out. Exaggeration is really blowing something out of proportion. So in a folk tale, you are going to have something exaggerated, something that is not even possible is going to be told. Then you might have magical elements. You might have a character that actually has some kind of magical ability. Or you might have a certain object that has magical abilities of some sort. Then my favorite part is the talking animals. Usually there is some kind of animal that is able to talk in a folktale. You might have the main characters as animals. For example, Tortoise and the Hare. All right, Tortoise and the Hare were our main characters and they could actually speak. Then we have what is called motif. When we talk about a motif, we're talking about something that appears in multiple stories. Okay, it might be the same thing, but it appears over and over and over again in different stories. For example, you have numbers 3, 7, and 12. Okay, that's those three numbers are a motif. Uh, think about how many stories that you can go through that actually mention the number 3. Okay, you might have three wishes. You might have had three opportunities to accomplish something. Three appears over and over and over again. Okay, same thing with seven and then 12. Okay, uh, one of my favorite folk tales is The Luck Child. And he was called The Luck Child because he was the seventh son of the seventh son of the seventh son. And that's why he was a luck child because he came from a line of seven sons. And then you have 12. Um, if you know some of the fairy tales, one of the fairy tales is um, 
the 12 dancing princesses, that is a motif. It's a number that appears over and over and over again. Then you have certain characters or situations that appear over and over and over again. I imagine you guys can immediately think of the evil stepmother character that is insanely jealous of the main uh, character in the story. That's a motif, having that certain character show up again and again and again. Or situations. If you have a uh, situation where one character is really clever while another one isn't so smart, that's a situation that pops up quite often in folk tales. And then finally, we have the purpose. What exactly is the purpose of a folk tale? Why should we read folk tales? Well, first off, like any good story, there's going to be a theme. Themes are those lessons about life that you should take away. Uh, for example, Tortoise and the Hare, you've got the theme, slow and steady wins the race. Okay, can we apply that to life? Yes, we can. We can apply that to life today. We are slowly and steadily trying to beat out COVID-19. Slow and steady wins the race. That's a lesson to apply to life from that story. That's a theme. Or a folktale might explain something about nature. Uh, for example, folktales about Pecos Bill. You can actually uh, look him up on YouTube. There's a lot of really cute little cartoons about Pecos Bill. Um, one of them explains how the Rio Grande was was created. If you recall, that's uh, the biggest river. Okay, it was created by Pecos Bill. Bakersfield dug the Rio Grande in order to get some water to Texas to help his cattle. Okay, uh, obviously that's not the truth, but that's what the folktale says. All right. Then finally, passing on culture. Okay, uh, like I said, folk tales were passed on orally, being told from generation to generation to generation, often explaining to kids why certain things are done within a family or within a certain culture. So the purpose of a folk tale is either to teach a lesson about life, to explain something in nature, or to simply pass on elements of your culture. Okay, so those are all the elements of a folk tale. You got your culture, you've got your hyperbole, you have motifs, and you have some kind of purpose. Okay, uh, finally, let me just recap. I miss you guys. Okay, please feel free to contact me. This is my email, anna.lee at websterpsp.org. Uh, don't forget to join my group on Remind if you need me. You can text code at nwjhlee to 81010. And also, don't forget to be checking out the resources portal at websterpsb.org. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson at least learn something about folktales, uh, because my next video will actually be uh, me reading a folktale and uh, working through trying to analyze those different elements that we discussed in this video. All right, I hope everybody stays safe, stay healthy, stay at home, and hopefully we'll be back to normal soon. I love you guys. Bye.